All right. I would like to call the December 3, 2024 special session of the Planning Commission to order. Uh, roll call, please. <clears throat> Commissioner Conk. Commissioner Spence. Present. Commissioner Kelly. Present. Vice Chair Johnson. Present. And Chair DeBlanc. I'm here. All right. We're at public comment. First item on the agenda is public comment. The Planning Commission invites the public to provide comments at this time. Members of the Planning Commission may not discuss items that are not specifically identified on the agenda. Therefore, pursuant to ARS 38-431.01, action taken as a result of public comment will be limited to directing staff to study the matter, responding to any criticism or scheduling the matter for further consideration and decision at a later date. Persons interested in making comments on a specific agenda item are asked to complete a brief form and submit it to the clerk or liaison during the meeting. Each speaker is asked to limit their comments to five minutes. This is for items that are not on, listed on the agenda today. Does anyone have any public comment? All right, we will close public comment. Minutes, next is consideration of the minutes of the meeting of November 19, 2024. Are there any comments or edits to the minutes? All right, do I hear a motion to approve the minutes? I'll make a motion to approve the minutes from the November 19th, 2024 meeting. Thank you. Do we have a second? A second. All right. Thank you. Those in favor say aye. 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 All right. So uh, those opposed? No. All right. The motion carries unanimously. All right. New business. Moving on to new business, item 5.A is a public hearing for ordinance number 424, adopting a historic preservation ordinance. The commission will hold a public hearing to take public comment on ordinance number 424, adding text amendments relating to the establishment of a historic preservation ordinance to the town zoning code adding definitions of words and terms to chapter two definitions and adding article 3-170 historic preservation ordinance to chapter three zoning districts of the town of Clarkdale zoning code. And uh, our assistant town manager, Ruth Mayday is the staff resource for this item. And uh, Ms. Mayday. Would you like to provide a brief staff report for the commission and for the public? Thank you. Good evening, uh, commissioners and chair. Uh, before you, you have the final draft of the historic preservation ordinance. Uh, you saw this previously uh, this year and the commission decided to table the item and send it back to uh, staff for additional work with the community, which we have done. We've conducted several meetings with the property owners and other um, stakeholders in the historic district. <clears throat> Excuse me. So um, because this has been substantially changed, we came back to do another public hearing so we could discuss in detail what has been changed in this ordinance. Um, just a pre brief overview, the Historic Preservation Commission was established in uh, 2020 and um, by town council. And one of the things they were tasked with was creation of an historic preservation district. So, uh, and in historic preservation ordinance. <clears throat> the uh, creation of an historic preservation ordinance uh, enables the town to receive uh, certified local government status from the state of Arizona Parks Department, uh, the historic or the state historic preservation office. Uh, this status allows us to apply for grants for improvements in the historic district. The um, 
work on this started probably shortly after we started working uh, as a commission because it was a priority. We've spent quite a bit of time, the commissioners, or yes, the commissioners and I and uh, staff has spent uh, considerable time re reviewing several ordinances from surrounding jurisdictions and other ju jurisdictions across the state to review them, to find out what has worked, what hasn't worked, uh, the best way to present the in information, because as you can imagine, they were all a little bit different. So we spent a lot of time doing the legwork before we actually engaged a, a consultant to do any kind of outreach for this project. So we engaged Frog Urban Planning in 2023, held a workshop at that time, and then have proceeded to work on this ordinance since that point. Uh, we brought this to the, um, uh, let's see, December of 2023, the, uh, the Historic Preservation Commission had reviewed the first draft. We brought that forward. Um, it, the uh, property owners wanted to see some changes made. Uh, in February of, this, of uh, 2024, we held a joint meeting between the planning, or the yes, the planning commission, and the um, historic preservation commission. I'm sorry, the town council to review the document before we did bring it to a public hearing. So this has been vetted several times. Uh, we at when we did the special meeting um, with the historic preservation commission on May 21st of this year, that we took in quite a bit of public comment at that time. And uh, we did a roundtable uh, meeting with the workshop with the property owners and the stakeholders and staff in July and again in uh, September to better refine the language in the ordinance. The biggest objection was the initial version of this ordinance had mandatory participation, that we, if you were within the barn boundaries, you were required to participate. The property owners all objected, and we said, okay, fine, we'll make it an opt-in district so that you have the option of selecting whether you want to participate in the district or not. Do you want to be... Do you want to be a part of the district? There are benefits to joining the district. We'll walk through those in a second. And that was the biggest objection we heard. So once we had, we uh, rewrote the ordinance to provide that opt-in option, we had almost all of the building owners and property owners agree that they were fine with the way it was and wanted to move forward. There will be a time for public comment when this part is complete. So you can listen and take it at face value and there isn't back and forth discussion. I'll repeat it. So the property owners that had objected to the district before that had insisted that they wanted out because of a Prop 207 claim, we have talked to all of them, the railroad, we've talked to Clarkdale Metals, some of the other building owners in town, the Bacchuses, and they all said that they wanted back in the district. <clears throat> so that's where we stand today. So I'd like to take a few minutes to walk through this ordinance and just give you an overview because it is a lot of information all at once. So if you turn to your packets, uh, the first section in this historic preservation district what, uh, is the purpose and that sets forth the uh, reasons for adopting this. Uh, number one is to protect, preserve, and enhance the significant elements of the historic, historical, architectural, cultural, and archaeological heritage of the town. Encourage the identification and recognition of significant historic resources. Encourage the sensitive adaptation of historic properties to modern uses. Ensuring that new construction, additions, alterations, and demolitions to both historic and non-historic properties 
within the Clarkdale Historic District are carried out in a manner which is not detrimental to the historic integrity of the district. Encouraging the identification and protection of prehistoric and historic archeological resources, resources and enhancing the value of the historic district and properties. Protecting and preserving those properties within the town that are valuable to the preservation of the community character and identity, preserving and enhancing the attractiveness of the town to potential home buyers and business interests, and supporting historic tourism and promoting commercial development and economic benefit to the town. Excuse me, Ruth. Mm -hmm. um, can you tell me where you are in this that you're reading from? You go to the ordinance. I'm here. Page 15. All right, thank you. It starts um, right after the ordinance language. Thank you. Actually, page 14. 14? Yep. All right. So page 14 shows you a, a small portion that provides the additional definitions that will be added to chapter two, and then goes into the rest of the ordinance. So that's where the purpose is, is at the bottom of page 14. Okay. Um, uh, next is section 3-170-020, Historic Preservation Overlay District Designation. Uh, this uh, talks about this being an overlay zone that you, it is in addition to the existing underlying zoning. Uh, it has, the map is included in there with the, um, with the boundaries of the district. Uh, those properties that opt into the um, district are entitled to the following benefits, waiver of building permit, permit fees, for applications that bring historic, existing historic structures into compliance with adopted building codes, accelerated review of historic preservation projects, accelerated permitting of historic preservation projects, and waived application fees for historic preservation projects. Property owners that do not opt in are subject to the development standards for the underlying zoning classification, which is commercial. Uh, moving to section 3-170-030, these move into the development standards for each for the district. We talk a bit about siting um, and relationship to adjacent spaces with buildings, connections to existing sidewalks, um, a main entrance from a public sidewalk, and uh, front setbacks reduced to zero uh, if you are heavy, if you... It, empty or your access is right to the, on the street. Section B also talks about exterior wall design, materials and finishes. Uh, and that just kind of goes through this section shows you the different parts of the structure and the uh, materials that are encouraged to be used. The roof and parapet walls talks about what we, you can do with the uh, roof and the parapet or what's in, required to be repaired. Um, section D talks about storefronts, doors, windows, and awnings. And those um, sections uh, describe the types of doors that are recommended, the recessed uh, entryways, rounded arches, uh, and the clerestory windows. And then site features talks about uh, street furniture and other features like that. Uh, section 3-170-040, application process, walks through the process for application for a historic preservation project. So basically what's required for that, and again, this is only for project for businesses that opt into the district. What is required is that you submit an application just like you would for any other project, and it goes through the review process with uh, planning and zoning with the community development department. Uh, the building inspector takes a look at it. Then it goes to the Historic Preservation Commission for design review. And then once it's through that stage, it comes the project is either approved or not approved or approved with corrections. Um, so the next section talks about a certificate of appropriateness and what the um, certificate of appropriateness is as part of that application process. That's, that's a, um, it's concurrent so that when you apply, 
uh, the Historic Preservation Commission and staff look at your project and make sure that it's appropriate historically, that you're not doing anything that is going to detract from the uh, architectural and historic significance of the building. And that's what you get approved for a certificate of appropriateness. The last section talks about demolition and moving of buildings and structures. Um, it's important to have something in the ordinance for uh, such a situation. I have seen buildings that have literally collapsed in the middle of a strip of historic buildings and communities back in Michigan. And they had no infill regulations and what was constructed in their place did not match at all what was previous th previously there, nor did it coincide with any of the existing built environment. So this section talks about demolition and moving of structures, that if there is an emergency, the building official has the ability to demolish the building, to issue a demo permit immediately. Otherwise, there's a review process that's required uh, for that demo permit. After, uh, there are two other attachments here. Um, we have the flow chart for that certificate of appropriateness. I just outlined for you. It just walks you through the steps. We start with the power meeting or pre-application review meeting. And um, at that time, staff will determine whether it's minor work and we can do uh, approval at a staff level or whether it's a major project and it needs to go through that uh, more rigorous review and approval process. And then um, after that, we just have a cross section of Main Street showing uh, the different street widths and setbacks, sidewalks, uh, canopies and awning, awnings and so forth. So with that, I'd be happy to answer any questions that anyone has. All right, thank you. Um, thanks for the report. And what we do now at this time is that the, the people on the commission have an opportunity to ask questions or comments. And so that's what we're gonna do now. Yes, go ahead. If you initially, if you're a private property owner, in the district and you initially um, elect to either um, participate or not participate, mm -hmm. but change your mind, their mind down the road, what, what's all involved in that? Um, there really isn't much involved. Uh, the, the purpose of this is to make sure, to encourage building owners to invest in their properties, bring them up to codes so that they're occupiable and 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 usable for downtown in the downtown setting. And this is the same with the industrial buildings, the uh, buildings that are owned by Clarkdale Metals. Uh, those are also eligible as is the roundhouse and the superintendent's house that the Verde Canyon Railroad own. So there may be work that has to be done right away to sure. get up to, okay. Yeah. Thank you. Um, right, I have a ahead. question. Uh, so uh, this is opt-in. So once, right. once this, if this was come effect tomorrow, they still have to opt-in to be eligible for that. Correct. Once they decide not to opt-in, uh, I'm assuming there's no difference than before, right? No, the, 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 they would not be beholden to these regulations. The only thing they would have to uh, abide by were the underlying zoning regulations. And if you look at the map, those are the properties that are eligible to opt in. We're not taking, not all buildings can opt into the district right now, just some of the, just the commercial structures downtown. Right, and, and those zoning, uh, that doesn't change uh, with, no. with this? No, um, no. Okay. So this is, this is in addition to, it doesn't supplant what was, what's already there. Okay. So we're clear that it is opt in yes. and not opt out. Correct. Right. The like I said, the map shows the buildings that are eligible to opt in. If they do nothing, they are not beholden to these regulations. All right. And is there a process for that that's in writing? Yes, we will we'll have an application that they can fill out to opt in and says, I want to be in the historic district. OK, is there anyone else that has any other any commission members have any other questions? Uh, the only comment I have is I think it would be useful to um, quantify mm -hmm. 
when we say most property owners or a lot of the property owners or many that uh, I think we're that, not including everybody. No, I know there are people who still object to it, but uh, no, I understand. But to quantify it rather than using terms like many or a lot, which for some people, they don't know which category sure. they're in. That, that's all. Yep. Thank you. Thank you. Oh, one more question. How many property owners were we're talking about just total roughly? One, two, three, four, five, six. Total? Seven, eight. Yeah, total. I'm sorry? No, that's the number of total. Just that, right. that are either in or out. Right. Those are the number. Of, that's not the number of buildings. Those are the number of building owners. Some of the building owners own several buildings. All right. Okay, good. Okay. Yeah, thank you very much. All right. So Ruth has provided the staff report. I think the commission is satisfied with their questions and comments. And at this time... Uh, Gus, you have the time. I would like to open the public testimony portion of this hearing. Oh, and we have, I will, let's see, let's get this in alphabetical order by first name. How about uh, Drake? Would you like to come forward and introduce yourself and uh, say whatever you'd like to say? Um, good evening, Commissioner's Chair and, and town staff members and audience as well. My name is Drake Mike. I own essentially two of the buildings in the town of Clarkdale here um, and so forth. I would like to um, mention a couple of things that I strongly um, um, encourage that the um, the board here or the commission approves sending the, um, the HBO up to the town council for further approval at that time. Um, why? I'm going to get into that right now. Um, there's many paths that we can take in the town of Clarkdale. And we've taken pretty much all of those paths in our past history. And out of all of those paths that we have taken in the town of Clarkdale, we seem to be stuck in what's called a systemic sort of cycle of vacancy. And we just cannot break out of this cycle of vacant properties. And there's many reasons we're stuck in that cycle. You know, we can blame it on the sole source industry that used to be here. We can blame it on the suburb, suburban uh, market that opened up in Cottonwood. We can blame it on a bypass route. You know, there's many reasons for that. But it's about how do we break out of that? That's important here. And when we look at this HPO, we look at other towns and we can see that they've broken out of that cycle. You look at Cottonwood today versus Cottonwood 20 years ago. Uh, they've adopted the HPO. Um, the town is, just to mention, the town of Sedona has adopted um, a historic preservation ordinance. And there's only four historic properties in that town. What do they know in Sedona that we don't hear? They must know something because we have 380 some properties. So we need to look at that from that viewpoint. We've done our due diligence on this as well. That's for sure. I've been at meeting after meeting after meeting. Let me run down some of these meetings. I've been at stakeholder meetings. I've been at vision sessions. I've been at meetings with ASU. I've been at meetings with staff. I've been at meetings that have been studies. I've been to talk to council members. I've seen consultants come and talk talk about this. I've had work sessions. There have been case studies that we've all talked about. And the audience here, many of them have been there. Just to let you know, and many means many too. Okay. The strategic plan of this town of Clarkdale, the current one that's up for the 24 to 26 session, their number one strategic goal in the town of Clarkdale, Arizona, it's to preserve and celebrate Clark does history. The first goal is for the historic preservation ordinance to pass. That's all the town staff members, town council members, professionals coming together. And one thing that we need in the town of Clarkdale is this. So I strongly support it. Um, it's also HPOs have been recommended by professionals 
and other consultants, consultants, local first Arizona, Main Street programs throughout the United States also recommend steps like this as to move forward. Um, let's see, we need to break out of this cycle somehow. And I think this is the one method to break out of it. It opens doors down to the future that we haven't had before. You may hear a lot of recommendations of what people want, but those are all old recommendations. We've had those possibilities in the past already. You can see the outcome of everybody's possibilities already on the street. Those possibilities aren't working. We need a new possibility. We need a new path forward. And this path is what I recommend, along with a whole bunch of other folks as well. So thanks for hearing me out, and um, we hope we can move forward. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for your comments. And next we have Karen McClanahan. Thank you, commissioners. I am Karen McClanahan. I live in Cottonwood. I am a managing member and owner of 917 Main Street. And I also own one of the businesses in the building called The Red All, which for the record, we're a little pop-up. We were the only retail shop collecting sales tax that was open on Black Friday, which we found really fascinating um, in this very small town of a single block. I have a video that I can show in case anyone's interested in seeing it. We, we were a little surprised by that. Um, there are also no vacant properties on Main Street. It's a single block. All are actively being worked on. And to my knowledge, if they're not actively being worked on, they are awaiting permits. So I just want to clear that up with my eyes for the record. Uh, regarding the ordinance, the staff report states that the language in this final ordinance is clear and legally sound, and I respectfully disagree with that statement. I think it needs some work. In my view, the ordinance, if it's written clearly, it should be precise, understandable, and leave the reader with no questions, it should be very clear, and no assumptions. This is not the case. So here are some of the questions that I have. Uh, that first section 3-170020, it begins by identifying the district and it states the historic preservation district which is subject to the regulations set forth, designated by the boundaries identified in Exhibit 1. That's the map. The map implies, as it is read, as it stands, that the properties on the map are subject to the regulations. Therefore, I've run this by some friends and said, if you look at this map, is my building opted in? And they said, yes. That's what it implies, as well as other buildings. Next question that I have, the properties that do not opt in are subject to the underlying zoning classification. Ruth Mayday just said that that is in fact commercial zoning. And I would like to request that that be added to the ordinance. Again, for absolute clarity, you should be able to read this ordinance at, with fresh eyes and not have questions. Uh, moving on to my next question, the properties electing to adhere to the requirements of the ordinance. It's on that first section, I think question three or four. What does electing to adhere to mean? For me, I read that and said, well, haven't they already agreed to the standards if they've opted in? Therefore, the requirements and the standards apply to them. Can they elect to not adhere to the requirements and still be opted in? It, it's just not clear. And I think that should that whole sentence could probably be removed and, and it wouldn't lose anything. My next question, all of the sections have language that refer to an exhibit and it's some version of, this is a graphic representation of the requirements of the list that then follows. What follows under that phrase requirements is language that says, for example, under the storefronts, doors, and windows section, graphic representation of the requirements, then it says large storefront windows may be recommended. 
Wood recommended, steel may be, rounded arches are encouraged. So those recommended and encouraged contradict a requirement. Are they recommended or are they required? That needs absolute clarity. During the July 11th work session, we pointed out that the HPC had incorrect architectural terms in this ordinance. None of the buildings in the exhibits have clear story windows. The HPC acknowledged this. They said they would change it and they did not. So you're about to codify an incorrect architectural term into an ordinance. Those aren't clear story windows. You can look at the Secretary of the Interior's 100 page plus document and search clear story, you'll find it once. Those are transom windows. We told the commission that they never changed it. I have more questions, but I'm about to run out of time. <laughs> so let me just try to end with a few final thoughts. Every version of the ordinance has had ambiguous language. This final version is steer, still not clear enough. Again, it should be unambiguous and leave the reader with no questions. In order for our property to not appear opted in, and if opted in, it might appear as in non-compliance with the ordinance, I have requested since April that our property be removed. It has yet to be removed. Per the staff reports, other property owners have been removed at their request. The town itself requested to have some of their parcels removed and they were removed. Most recently, another property owner agreed to be placed into the district and that was done on the map. So the town has demonstrated that they are agreeable to removing or adding properties, yet they don't remove mine. This is my third request. Inclusion on the map implies that we are opted in. That's why I want it removed. Additionally, the exhibit photos show our property and also imply that we are opted in. Sorry, let me turn one page. My fellow owners and I understand that the town is focused on gaining access to grant money via this ordinance, but it is at the expense of the small property owners who will have, <clears throat> excuse me, who will have their property values diminished. My LLC partners and I do not believe that this ordinance should progress any further. We would like to see it abandoned and encourage the town and the HPC to focus on actual preservation and not more legislation. Thank you for your time, commissioners. Thank you for your comments. And uh, next we have, is this Mimi, Memi? Hi, I'm Amy Perkins. I represent the Conlin Group, and I do want to apologize to you, Ruth, for, for shouting from the back. It was kind of surprising to hear um, uh, some idea that we uh, uh, support this ordinance. We don't. We've, we've uh, in writing and at two meetings, stated that we don't want to be involved in this ordinance. We think that that's an additional layer of um, red tape that one has to go through, and um, even though we are one property owner, we own seven of the 16 properties that are gonna be affected by this. Think about that. Almost half of the properties, right? That we don't wanna be involved in. Uh, Drake brought up the, the city of Sedona only having just a few historic properties, but yet they formed a historic district. That wasn't to preserve those properties, it was to access SHPA funds. That's all that was about. Um, I do want to bring your attention to one line in this um, ordinance that I think is very ambiguous. Uh, the, the town has stated repeatedly this is an opt-in, opt-out situation, but here's a line that says, an opt-in form must be signed by the property owners and submitted to the town prior to issuance of any building permits. Does that sound like it's opt-in? Sounds like I have to opt in in order to be able to access a building permit. Now I get that that everybody's saying, oh no, this is opt-in, whatever, but let me bring your attention to a situation that just happened to Eric Jurison in Old Town. As you know, he's 
purchased and revamped beautifully at least nine commercial properties in Old Town. He's bought these buildings. Old Town has a, a historic ordinance, but he's gone in and done whatever he felt like he needed to. He's made them beautiful. He just bought the Coombs building, trotted in there with his permits. They have a new uh, reviewer. That new reviewer kicked back those permits and said, you don't meet the criteria for our historic overlay, for our historic ordinance. So we're not gonna approve these plans. He just spent, what, a million dollars on that building and is told that he can't do what he thinks that he needs to do because it doesn't meet their criteria. Right now, everybody might have an idea of what these things say, but give it a few years, give it a couple of new people. All of a sudden, what we think this says and what it actually says might be two very different things. So as far as this opt-in, opt-out language, I think that it's highly ambiguous and I think that it can be interpreted in multiple ways. I think that line needs to, to get cleaned up and quite frankly, we, we think that this ordinance should go away. I think that it's totally unnecessary. You've got active people that are working on their buildings. As far as Drake's building goes, he's just hired to, I don't even know how much it cost him to have the, um, arsenic removal that, or the lead-based paint removal done on his building. And they took off as much as they could and then they had to seal the rest. And how did they seal the rest? They sealed it with paint. In the ordinance it says painting is to be discouraged. If you get some very um, uh, hot to trot new person, they might say, hey, painting's to be discouraged. You need to get all of that paint off to whatever tune it costs. You're gonna to pay to get that done because we don't want the, paint, the building painted because it's to be discouraged. I understand that it seems like this ordinance is gonna change the economics of this town. And I think that that's highly unlikely. The idea that somebody would have to come in, buy a building and submit to yet another overlay of requirements in order to get that business up and running it just doesn't bear out. It really doesn't. And we have a problem of economics in this town. That problem is just in size. We don't have enough scale to make our downtown economically feasible. It's only one block long. People pull into town. Yeah, it's really cute. They go a block, they hit the park. Oh, that was it. Well, well let's just keep going up to Jerome. I don't care what you put in those buildings. There, there's very limited ability to make them shine. It's only a block. Let me look at my notes and make sure I got everything. Yep, I think that's it. Thank you very much. And again, I apologize for interrupting you. Thank you. All right, and we have uh, Steve. Commissioners, my name is Steve Lauman. I live in Cottonwood. Um, I'm speaking in regard to my interest in 917 Main Street, uh, my partner, Karen. I don't see this historic preservation. I don't see this. I don't see historic preservation as the primary purpose of this ordinance. In fact, I'm not convinced this ordinance will make any significant difference in this town with regard to historic preservation. Not in a town with a robust historic culture already exists and with a design review process in place that takes into consideration architectural context. The actual primary purpose is to qualify the town for certified local government, enabling the town to apply for grants. The problem here is the ordinance is being imposed on private properties to achieve this goal 
yet private property owners can't reach, receive any of this public money for tangible improvements. Additionally, private property owners stand to suffer diminution in their value of their properties. Potential buyers of property will encounter in their due diligence what appears to be complexity, red tape, and potential for unfavorable interpretation. They will likely choose to buy somewhere else or lowball the seller. A seller will see limited pool of buyers and may have to take a hit on the selling price. This ordinance will surely stifle buy-in to the downtown should a property come up for sale. Unfortunately, this ordinance will do more harm than good, not just to individual property owners, but to the town as a whole. The benefits won't outweigh the harm caused in the private property owners, caused to the private property owners. Our properties should not be collateralized and suffer damage just for the town to pursue a possible source of grant funding. We ask the Planning Commission to recommend council reject this ordinance and abandon further work on it. Thank you for your comments, Steve. I that's everyone I had a form from. Is there anyone else who wishes to comment? All right. Thank you. So at this time, I would like to close the public testimony portion of this hearing. And that would be great. So we heard a lot of input tonight from some of the building owners who do, who are obviously in opposition to this ordinance. Um, I wanted to address some of the concerns that they've shared uh, and some of the um, statements that they've made um, that regarding the uh, proposed ordinance. So initially, when we started working on this, uh, it was mandated and to avoid Prop 207 claims and at the behest of the property owners, we made this opt-in, which is why we changed the language significantly so that, we, so that the map would represent those properties that are eligible to opt into this program. There is no requirement that anybody opt in. You don't have to opt in to get a building permit. You don't have to opt in to fix your building. Um, whether you opt in or not, the process for approval is the same. It's just a matter of whether it goes to uh, the design review board for approval or if it goes to historic preservation for approval. The rest of it is all the same. Will you remind us what Prop 207 is? Sure. So Prop 207 was a, a, a passed by the voters of the state of Arizona in about uh, 2011 that requires um, towns not take action and jurisdictions not take actions that would diminish the pro uh, value of private properties. And if they do, the uh, private property owner can file a claim against the town or the county or whoever, the city. So that's in a nutshell what Prop 207 is. Um, so again, this is an, most definitely an opt-in ordinance, and that's why it's written the way that it is. Uh, that um, we have taken properties in and out. Like I said previously, when it, this first came in, there were many, many property owners that said, I don't want to be part of a mandatory district. And again, we, they all, with the exception of the Conlins and the, nine, the folks that own 917, the rest of them have all asked to be put back in. We've had other property, we had another property owner who had asked to be added to the district that wasn't included in the first place. That person's property is on the National Register. They qualify to be included in those properties that can apply for approval. And we've added her back in. Most of those properties have been on the periphery of the district. So we are looking at creating a hole in the middle of the district if we accept properties from this ordinance. 
those properties should in the future they decide to to uh, participate in the district because they're accepted from the district if they were to be accepted from the district now would have to go through a rezoning process to get their their projects at, or their buildings added back into the district because this is an overlay district it's an additional zoning layer so they would have to apply for a, a, a zone change to get this overlay added back to their property uh, and go through a public hearing process to be added back into the district. I just want to be clear about what being accepted from the district means. That, that it's not just you said I go being in, accepted. You mean removed exception, from. right? And they're, excuse me. They're yes. not opting in. Not opting in. Thanks. Um, we are not discouraging uh, the uh, painting that Drake is doing on his building because it's for uh, health safety reasons. The existing paint was, was lead based and in no instance would the town forbid somebody to encapsulate in a lead based paint that would be contrary to the public good. Um, with respect to um, adding an additional layer, this is not an additional layer. This is instead of the existing process. Mm -hmm. This is a different layer. So instead of going through planning commission or and then, I'm sorry, through design review board, like I said, this would simply replace that process with going to historic preservation commission rather than design review board for historic buildings. All the rest of the buildings in town would go to uh, design review board. Um, the grants that the town would be eligible to apply for uh, are uh, through the federal government. They're passed through grants. They get passed to the state of Arizona, to the state historic preservation office. There, are, there is one direct grant program that we can apply to the feds for, and those grants um, are awarded to the town to use for the improvement of the historic preservation district. There's one program in particular, uh, Paul, I want to say the last name is Hearst, uh, grant program that provides monies that can be used by the municipality to um, assist building owners and paying for facade improvements. I've done that project in another town. We gave property owners rebates once they spent money on it, um, bringing their facades up to code and uh, rehabbing them so that they more closely uh, uh, represent the original architectural features. They were given a rebate for the cost of their improvements. So those programs do exist. Um, it is uh, not the intent of the town to do this solely for grant purposes. The, as Drake uh, put it, the preservation of the historic features of this town, the structures, the buildings, the settings, is very, very important to, Clark, to, uh, to Clarkdale, to the town staff, to the town council. We wouldn't be pursuing this this many years later if it were not. This is something that the, the council takes very seriously. It's in their strategic plans. We discuss it in staff meetings regularly. Having a downtown with this kind of collection of buildings that are largely intact, nothing has been lost, no buildings mid-block have fallen down, is highly unusual. You don't see this very often. I can tell you on the other side of the Mississippi, it's very rare. So to preserve that as a part of our economic development and tourism efforts is, is important. Uh, to not have a standard that we can rely on for uh, review and approval of projects would make it far more arbitrary than it is now. The guidelines that we have now through uh, the design review board are not nearly as concise as these. They're far more vague than, than what we have set forth in this ordinance. And that's all I have for right now. Well, thank you, Ruth. So, um, the a question, quick question. 
Well, I guess we could do that. Just on if if somebody opts in and then they sell the property, um, does the new owner have to opt in? The new owner would be in unless they came to us and said, "Hey, I'm not. I'm buy, I bought this building. I'm not interested in participating. I want out." Then we just tear up the form and you're out. Okay. Good. And will that be documented? Yes. Okay. Very good. Thank you. So um, this completes item 5A, the public hearing for ordinance number 424, adopting a historic preservation ordinance. <clears throat> so now we move on to item 5.B, of the agenda. This is to take action on the proposed ordinance number 424, adopting a historic preservation ordinance. The commission will now discuss, consider, and act upon ordinance number 424 relating to the establishment of a historic preservation ordinance to the town zoning code. Adding definitions of words and terms to chapter two, definitions and adding article. 3-170, Historic Preservation Ordinance to Chapter 3, Zoning Districts of the Town of Clarkdale Zoning Code. Commissioners, does anyone have any additional comments or questions, or are there any other final comments from staff before we entertain a motion? Yes, um, actually not quite sure where to start on this there's um this has been a long process unfortunately i've only seen this a couple times and the last time i saw that the verbiage was quite a bit different and um i remember the last time we looked at it uh we actually uh, there were quite a few people and made quite an effort to get rid of am ambiguity um in there and uh, like i said it's it's kind of changed now i don't think personally i don't think it's misleading per se but um i can see a couple of the points and if there is uh for instance that if we're if we're using a wrong term you know that should be that should be corrected before we put it in there um as far as the overlay uh, i was involved i was on a planning commission back east and we basically went through the same process and uh the idea was the same we had a historic district outline and within that, you could opt in, you could opt out. Uh, well, actually, it was, you had to opt in uh, just, just like this. And um, everybody understood that just because you had a building in that um, district didn't mean that you were opted in. Um, it didn't, didn't mean you opted out either. You know, you had to go in there. But we did have something in the, uh, in the text at the beginning that clearly stated something along those lines that, given that a building is in there does not imply, you know, one thing or another, it's just defining the district. And I think that should be uh, put in there and, and I get rid of a little, little bit of that ambiguity. Um, also things like the pictures. Um, I don't think that implies that you are or are not opted in. We had the same situation. We had buildings that were just good examples of what they were trying to portray. Um, but it was clear in the text that um, that unless you saw something that said that particular building was opted in, um, then then that wasn't the case. There was nothing to imply with that. And uh, I know this has been a long long road, and uh, there's been a lot of effort put into it. And I think it's really really close. But I do think there are a few little things that just need to be tidied up. Um, and then I think, um, you know, the fact is that, uh, it, it seems clear to me, I hope it's clear to everybody that if you don't opt in this, you, you continue business as normal. Um, if you do, then you, um, you know, abide by these, uh, guidelines or whatever, but beyond that, um, yeah. Um, just kind of hard to, because, because even though this has been around for a long time, I haven't been 
looking at this with the same passion, uh, or I shouldn't say passion, with the same level of effort as the the town and other people, the owner, business owners, things like that. But I did try to look at it objectively. And when I went through this packet um, and really kind of seeing this for the first time just a couple of days ago, um, it it to me, it didn't have that uh, that implication that uh, um, that you were automatically opted in or you weren't or whatever. I think it was, I think it's very, very close. So we can certainly add a sentence that would clarify that just because your property, this map, this map identifies those properties eligible to participate, right? Inclusion in the map does not mean that you are automatically opted into the ordinance. That's a simple fix. It's, yes, yeah, state something specifically that this is just defining a district. Yes, it does not absolutely. Apply anything within that. The lines on the map indicate who can participate if they choose. Exactly. Outside the lines, not eligible. Yes, pretty correct. clear. Okay, good. That's very clear. <clears throat> All right. Any other commissioners have questions or comments before we take any action? Carol, I do. Um, some of the folks thought that some of the language was ambiguous. I don't remember exactly which ones, but I don't know if we can address those. Sure. Okay. Um, anyone else on the commission? Anything else from staff? I have one comment that doesn't really require an answer. It's just, I, it's kind of interesting. There's some number of properties and the number of properties that are within the district that could opt in. There's a, there's a quantity number. And I just for curiosity's sake would be interested in the square footage. Um, you know, you know, if there's seven people who want to opt in and they represent 87% of the square footage of commercial properties, I would view that in a particular way. And I'm, I'm not even asking for it, but we just didn't hear anything about that. That's all. It's just a comment. <laughs> all right. Anything else from anyone? I was going to say we can include that for council if you would like. Great. So when we choose action, you would uh, just do the statistics mm -hmm. on numbers of properties, square footage, and locations. Sure. So uh, I think that can make a difference. Thank you. Thank you. All right. So I would, oh, looky. No more? All right. I'd like to entertain a motion at this time. Uh, okay. <laughs> uh, I would like to make a motion to approve the ordinance 424 with some stipulations. And uh, not 100% sure how to say it, but basically... Um, add verbiage to uh, make it clear that the uh, opt-in or the uh, district boundaries do not denote whether you've opted in or out. Um, and clean up a couple of the items that are, th that would be clearly uh, ambiguous. And um, it's right, it's just a, just a couple of words. It's, I think it's very close. Um, and, uh, if those could be, um, clear, uh, I think that, uh, the rest of it, I, I vote that we accept it given those conditions. And we so, can, this is your, this is your motion with those stipulations to move it to council for their review. We're not, this is right. not, this is only moving it to council or their intelligence. Exactly. I just wanted to kind of restate what I think I heard was we clarify 
right up front that the district boundaries and the eligible properties. And I think it's important to put in that purpose section, which is 3 170 010 with some language clarifying the opt in. One of the things I didn't see in this ordinance that I think came up tonight is I maybe one of the commissions, I think one of the commissions or commissioners asked it is the what if you want to opt out? That once you opt in, you're not stuck forever. So we should probably clarify that. I also heard um, a reference made to Claire Story Windows in one of the exhibits, and we can clearly uh, take that out. Um, those are the things I heard. And there was one more thing that. You can't clear up the ambiguity. That it doesn't, the opt in or opt out by a property owner doesn't necessarily the a new property owner doesn't necessarily has, date you forever it doesn't it's it doesn't in. land on the property forever so i think that ambiguity needs to be clarified and we heard some other comments about ambiguity and i know miss Mayday had a comment about the windows so with all of those we have your motion with those clarifications right. to move it to council. Correct. Do we have a second? I'll second the motion. All right. And all those uh, in favor of moving this to council with the stipulations, say aye. 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 All right. It's approved unanimously to move to council for their consideration. All right. We did that. The motion carries unanimously. Thank you. All right, six, future agenda items. This completes item 5B. We will now move on to item six, future agenda items. Either staff or the commission may request items to be added to a future agenda. Staff, are there any future items at this time? Not at this time, but we will be meeting shortly, staff, to do our uh, strategic planning for the next year. So we'll have more information after that. All right. Thank you. If I could just weigh in, just give you a heads up. In the new year, we've been working on, and we need to work on, uh, what I'm calling a comprehensive update to the zoning code. And the Planning Commission will play an important role in that. Um, going back, looking historically, the Planning Commission um, rarely met even once a month. I think uh, going forward, we'll likely be setting up work sessions with the commission to go through the ordinance. We've already been talking to a couple different consultants. We do have some funding. Uh, we're working on additional funding. So just a heads up in the new year that we'll be working on um, some updates to the zoning ordinance. And we'll be going through, hopefully, chapter by chapter with the planning commission and working on that probably over the next year. So you guys that are going to continue on the commission uh, we'll likely be busy beginning in January, February next year. Okay. And regarding uh, future agenda items, do we have a plan for next month? We, Not yet. does it look like? We will, we have a, a meeting scheduled on the 17th. Is that correct? We're going to, we, we were holding that just in case this item was continued tonight. So we're going to cancel that meeting on the 17th. So our next agenda will not be January. till January. Correct. Okay. That's good to know, everyone. So don't don't worry about the commission until next year. All right. Um, very good. Thank you so much. All right. That completes item six. We're now ready to adjourn without objection. I would like to adjourn this meeting. I get to say that this time. Well, uh, don't we have to vote on them? No? Yeah. Okay. Watch this. Yeah, good. Thank you.